stop playing uh, that's do or die as y'all know um i thought it'd be appropriate to start with that song since kamala harris put out a plan for black men like myself where uh, legalizing weed is supposed to be an incentive for us to vote for her as well as um, some some twenty thousand dollar ppp style loans i guess they've heard that some of the the brothers have been saying that they are happy that they got um you know, PPP loans, stimulus checks, whatever from Trump. All that is all to the side. I'm going to have a serious talk with y'all. Number one, uh, shout out to my West Side people. You know, I so love do or die. Uh, just give you an idea where I'm coming from. But that being said, um, I was going to have a serious talk with you guys about the types of the reasons why there are black men leaving the Democratic Party. Um... I realize that progressives, people on the left, black, white, whatever, don't want to hear anything, but it's misogyny. Now, while misogyny can be a reason for some people, it might be a reason for it for some. Don't get me wrong. African-American or black men are raised in the same Western United States of America as every other male. So, yeah, there is going to be some misogyny in in the community. That's true. However, I beg to differ with the president and all these pundits and strategists from Joy Reid to Sonny Hostin or whoever from Roland Martin. It is not the primary predicate upon which why the Democratic Party is losing black male voters. The, Democrat, the Democratic Party has been losing black male voters since Obama's second election. He, he got less black male votes and black votes in general from his first to his second election. Then Joe Biden got less votes than, oh, I'm sorry, then um, Hillary Clinton got less votes than that, even though it was still the majority. And Kamala Harris and Joe Biden got less votes than that. And now Kamala Harris is trending with possibly receiving less votes and the election comes up. Here's the deal. Let me say this. This shows that there's a problem with the Democratic platform, not a problem with Kamala Harris. Unfortunately for Vice President Harris, she is the face of the Democratic Party right now in regard to this particular election. Hate it or love it, that's, that's the reality of the situation. So it may not be so much about her as it is about the Democratic um, Party's platform that they've been utilizing for the last 16 years. But I won't talk about that platform. I'm going to talk about the types of black men that I have seen the majority of which, you know, the, this large group of black men who are not supporting Kamala Harris. And dare I say, a lot of black women share these sentiments. Let's start from left to right, okay? From this furthest left, we have the black voters who are going to be voting for Jill Stein because Jill Stein has a position on the Israel-Palestinian conflict right now where this particular group of people is pro-Palestine. Um, and she is talking about ending our funding for that war. So there are a lot of African, or I shouldn't say a lot, but there's a contingent of African-American voters who are on that particular position, that issue, that's the one they're not messing with Kamala Harris on, and they're not messing with Donald Trump. They more than likely will probably vote for Jill Stein. All right, then you have other people on the left. You know, some of my FBA ADOS brothers and sisters who are dead set on reparations. Now, rather you find reparations as an attainable policy position, I personally do not. However, I do understand the reason why they're going for this particular policy. And because Kamala Harris has not spoken any more directly to that than any other Democratic candidate over the last 16 years, they're not messing with her. And again, the Green Party is saying that they're going to try to press that issue. I think it's not going to happen, but nonetheless, I understand that that's their position. And that is a group of people that are not messing with Kamala Harris, right? As we get more towards the center, there's people on the basic policies of economics. These are people who are tired of the uh, open border mentality that the Democratic Party and progressives have. They're tired of hearing excuses that we have to have illegal immigrants here in order to exploit them as labor for them to work places that Americans won't work unless Americans are paid the actual cost 
of the labor to do the particular job. So that hey, you have that group there. You go a little further to the right, you have the group of people who also have those policy positions regarding economics and immigration, but there are also people who are tired of being told that they're whatever foe because they may not agree with boys playing in girls' sports just because the boy decides that he is now a girl. However you want to, however you want to take that, there are a group of people that really have a problem with that. Um, it's not that they have a problem with LGBTQ people; they have a problem with some of the policies that are being pushed forward, where they're being told that, "Hey, this is what we're going to do. We don't care what you're saying, and it is causing an issue." Okay. And we're talking about black voters here, so I don't want to hear people talking about, you know, people are racist or whatever. No, I haven't found any African Americans who are voting for Trump out of anti-black racism, I'll put it to you that way. Um, if you go further to right, there's the Christian evangelical African Americans. All right, these are people who take their faith seriously, who are truly anti-abortion. And they're not anti-abortion because they want to punish women or anything like that. They truly believe that abortion is killing a human being. I understand it's unpopular for the progressives to comprehend such a concept as they can only contextualize abortion as being about women's um, reproductive health. However, there is a group of people who look at a fetus as a person with some rights. Now, I understand I'm not going to have the debate about abortion, so I'm just going to leave it at that. There are people who see it truly as murder, and they're not backing anybody who's truly behind that, as Kamala Harris has made that a primary predicate of her campaign because she believes, and I'm sure the Democrats always believe that emotionally they can manipulate people with that. And, of course, there's some women who, of course, believe, I guess, it's only a reproductive issue, but... Ultimately, that discussion will be had probably within the next five years. I'm assuming that's going to become something that is going to have legislation attached to it where we have to have the real discussion about that. But I'll do a different video about the politic of abortion and the reality of abortion and the philosophical concepts of it and how people view it. But to the right, there are Christian people who believe that you know abortion is the murdering of a child. Further to the point, they also agree with the other positions that I mentioned that most people from moderate right to extreme right have when it comes to not supporting the progressive candidate. So I hope this has been educational to you. Now, I know there's still some of you going to still sit there because it emotionally feels good to you and you, for whatever reason, want to be intellectually fraudulent about it and willfully ignorant where you want to act like what I just said isn't true. Um, but this is the truth. And... You know, I posted something that, you know, I posted a little, a little joke cartoon on my Facebook that's, that uh, showed, um, you know, a black woman talking to a black man saying she was going to vote for Kamala Harris and he asked what her policy is. Then she says, you hate black women. And then the person, there were a few people that said that that's not happening. Well, let me tell you, I knew what's happening even before we got to this election. But when we, when she announced, um, I immediately saw on Twitter uh, YouTube videos of black women in this particular group of black women. It is not all black women. Dare I say it's probably not even most black women. Not saying that most black women won't vote for Kamala Harris. I still think most African Americans will vote for Kamala Harris. I think that the um, defection over to the right, though, is going to be roughly about 20% overall. Um, I know this is something people find hard to believe, but people haven't taken the temperature of black people regarding this. In any case, from the beginning, there were people coming at black men, you better support and stuff like that. You know, we've been supporting you, like voting for her is voting for all black women. Not logical, not rational, but like I said, it's a motive hyperbole. It is meant to manipulate emotion. And of course, after President Obama had his faux pas over in Pittsburgh, it became more pronounced thing where you had um, commentators like Sonny Hostin and Joy Reid attacking black men even further. Um, calling them misogynist as opposed to saying, hey, perhaps we should think about what these guys are saying. But unfortunately, the Democrats have not done that for the last 50 years as far as look at what a lot of demographics, be it white, white working class men, black men, they have, there's a lot that the Democrats have abandoned to the uh, grievance politics. But that's another video. I'll talk about this later. I will say this. Unfortunately, 
I believe that the illegal migrants that were allowed in this country, um, unfortunately for the Democratic Party, they haven't been able to fast track them to citizenship so they can vote to replace the black voters that they probably already knew they were losing. And I'm going to say this. I think that the Democrats got caught with their pants down. This um, exodus from the Democratic Party, be it to the Green Party or to the Republican Party or to whatever party, has happened and caught them off guard. Now, this is their own fault because it's how they played the game. Um, they made sure to keep Joe Biden in the game long enough to make sure that they can run some some court cases where they would not have to um, primary RFK, whether you agree with his politics or not. They did not want to primary him. There was no Democrat I can think of that was strong enough to beat RFK in a, in a, in a, in a primary. I think everyone knew Biden was a done deal, but they played their, the, the long game. They waited to the last possible moment, found their reason to swap him out with Kamala, therefore keeping the money in the campaign. Don't have to primary nobody. And perhaps we can push this through on identity politics. We can push this through by appealing to people that this is the historical time for the first woman to be president, the first black and Asian woman to be president, even though we, the question of her blackness is out. And I'm going to say this about Kamala Harris' blackness. I will say that Kamala Harris, even if her father was or is a black Jamaican, even if he is, if he claims to be a black Jamaican, that does not make her an African American or I should say a black American. And I think that people need to get get comfortable with this concept that there is a distinct people group. Like, you know, you have Puerto Ricans that are mixed of black and European and Taino Indians and you have Cubans the same, you have Dominicans are the same. Let me explain something. African or I should say black Americans are a distinct group of people, right? This is who we are. We are descendants of people who were kidnapped from Africa and made slaves and descendants of European, um, what they call indentured service that back in the 1600s often married and had babies with uh, these African Africans that were brought and forced here. And we're descendants of some Native Americans and Amerindians also who got mixed up in the genetic pool for various reasons. So that's who we are. We're a distinct people group, just as distinct as Puerto Ricans and Dominicans and Cubans. And people got to get out their feelings about that. That being said, this is why a lot of people don't consider Kamala Harris and recently even Barack Obama as being an actual black American. They are black people, perhaps. At least Obama claims to be black because his dad is a black African from Kenya who claims that he is black. So we can take him as being a black person, just not necessarily a what we call a foundational um, black American. Uh, Kamala Harris, on the other hand, no one's come out and said anything. And I'm going to say this. If I ran for office today, even my even my relatives who may not agree with my politics, if someone said, hey, this guy's not a black guy, I guarantee you're going to have quite a few people from Aurora, West Side Chicago, Detroit, Memphis, Jackson, Tennessee, uh, Los Angeles, New York. There's going to be a lot of black folks going to tell you, yeah, that, he's black. That's my cousin. That's my nephew. That's my 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 uncle. Whatever they're going to say, and it's going to be very clear. It's if if Kamala Harris was truly from a family that claimed their blackness, because there are people with African ancestry. All right, like there are some people that I would consider Afro Latinos that don't consider themselves Afro Latinos. That's the type of stuff I'm talking about. There are people that can have some African ancestry that just do not claim blackness, and that's cool, you know. Because at the end of the day, we shouldn't be voting for people predicated on them being black or female. If that were the case, you know, I should be voting for J.D. Vance because he's a Marine or Cornell, Cornell West because we're both theologians and black men. It, does, that, it doesn't work that way. It shouldn't work that way. That being said, I'm going to leave this video alone. Hope this has been educational and that you've learned something. And again, you know, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which I'm going to start posting these videos on. I'm start doing little educational videos. And look out for my book, Afraid of the Dark, where I do talk about the identity of African Americans, or I should say black Americans, the distinct identity of who we are, so that people can stop being confused. That being said, you all have a nice one. Peace.